Hey guys, what's up? Zijin Chang here, and welcome to the review of the Kingzone N3 Plus. Chinese smartphones have always been cheap, but they haven't always been good. There was usually a huge difference in price between Chinese smartphones and big name smartphones like the Galaxy S6 and the HTC One M9, but along with that came a huge difference in specifications and quality. With the release of the new MTK6732 chip, the gaps in specs and quality has narrowed significantly. The Kingzone N3 Plus was one of the first MTK6732 phones being released and has impressive specifications. The Kingzone N3 Plus looks, well, different. Its design differs from traditional smartphone design and seems to have a very mixed design language. It looks almost completely square from the front and around from any other angle. The back of the phone gets thicker closer to the middle, quite similar to the Nokia Lumia 920, creating a curve that fits quite well on the hand, making it very comfortable to hold. There is also a plastic chrome bezel that does not feel of high quality at all. The three capacitive buttons at the bottom of the screen are again different in design from normal capacitive buttons, using a kind of dot motif for each button. It also lights up and is orange in color. The volume and power buttons are located on the left and right side of the phone respectively, and they look and feel solid. Feedback is great when the buttons are pressed, there are no complaints here. The back cover of the phone is removable and is textured glossy plastic, which does not give the phone a premium feel, but keeps the phone light and quite solid. Opening up the back cover reveals the 2800 mAh battery, dual SIM slots, and a micro SD card slot. The 13 megapixel camera and LED flash, as well as the fingerprint sensor are located here. The camera sticks out from the back of the phone, so care has to be taken when placing the phone down. The overall build quality of the Kingzone N3 Plus is a mix of good and bad. The bad? Some might find it ugly and the materials used do not give it a premium feel. The good? The phone itself is light, strong, and very durable, bouncing off hardwood without breaking anything. In conclusion, the build quality of the phone can be summarized in one sentence. This phone feels cheap and flimsy while being strong and durable. The 5-inch screen is quite high quality and the 1280 by 720 resolution doesn't detract from the quality either. The color balance of the screen is on the blue side, giving it a cooler look. The maximum brightness of the display tops out at around 450 to 500 nits of brightness, and the screen itself isn't very reflective, making it legible enough in direct sunlight. Viewing angles are good as well. One thing I disliked very much about the display was the minimum brightness. It is way too bright. You will be able to see the screen at minimum brightness outside on a cloudy day in the afternoon. That is how bright it is. My previous Chinese phones all have had good sound quality, enough for listening to music and podcasts. They were all also very loud. I could hear my podcast quite clearly in my noisy car on the highway. The Kingzone also has good sound quality, better than the Ulephone B Pro and the Cubot X9, but has quite a soft speakerphone. Probably signature amazing art, I would assume. Does he probably has an actual signature that he can be like, dude. It is hard to hear speech in podcasts or TV shows in louder environments like a cafeteria, even with the volume turned all the way up. Another thing to note is that the phone provides very good haptic feedback, but the vibration motor in the phone is loud and is clearly audible in a silent place. Because the Kingzone N3 Plus has such a large 2800 mAh battery and a smaller 5 inch screen, I am hoping for absolutely amazing battery life. I performed the web browsing test and the video test. I set the screen brightness to 250 nits and installed Web Reloader from the Google Play Store and used it to reload web pages over Wi-Fi every few seconds. The Kingzone got a whopping 4 hours and 40 minutes, which is absolutely terrible for such a large battery. In the video playback test, the screen brightness was 250 nits and a standard definition video was played, and it got 5 hours and 22 minutes, which is a little better. There are two possible reasons why battery life isn't good. First, the software might not be well optimized, resulting in higher battery usage. I will update this review with more battery tests as future software updates are installed. Second, Kingzone lied about the battery capacity, and if they did, I estimate that the true capacity is somewhere around 2300 milliamp hours. I sincerely hope it is the first reason. On a more normal battery test, the phone was off the charger for a total of 16.5 hours. During that time, Wi-Fi, LTE, and GPS was always on. The screen on time was 3 hours and 44 minutes in total, and I used it to stream music, watch YouTube videos, play some games, and read some news. The phone charges pretty fast. It charged 15% in 10 minutes. I expected very, very good battery life, but battery life was just average. 
While the MTK6732 processor is a lot more power efficient than the MTK6592, this phone still gets average battery life despite its larger battery capacity. The battery will get you throughout moderate use for a day, but expect to plug it in by the end of the night or even in the evenings. The Kingzone N3 Plus comes with Android 4.4.4 KitKat. It also comes with a stock launcher that uses custom icons which are quite ugly. There actually isn't a way to change the icons on the stock launcher, so installing a new launcher is the only way to get rid of the ugly icons. I'm again impressed with this new breed of MTK6732 devices. The user experience is as smooth and fluid as the Nexus 5. Kingzone seems to have spent more than enough time on the software, eliminating lag from the phone completely. Swiping between home screens is fast and fluid. Launching and closing apps is instant as well. However, the Ulephone B Pro still feels faster by a very slight margin. It also includes smart gestures, allowing users to wake the phone by double tapping on the screen, drawing a letter on the screen that immediately turns the screen on, and launching an app as well. It also includes very basic notification control in the settings. You can change the notification light to five different colors and edit the settings for basic notifications like calls, SMS, and the calendar. The fingerprint sensor can not only be used for unlocking the screen, but also for navigating through the phone. It isn't as smooth or fast as just using your finger, but it is a pretty cool gimmick. I set up the fingerprint sensor and tried using it to unlock my phone. It seems to work about 70% of the time, but that 30% when it isn't working is frustrating enough for me to ditch the fingerprint sensor altogether. It has multiple languages as well. Pause the video to see if your language is supported. The 16 gig of space has been partitioned into a 4 gig and 8 gig partition for internal storage and internal SD card respectively. While I would have preferred the entire 16 gig to be partitioned to internal storage, at least Kingzone didn't partition 2 gigs to internal storage, which some phones have done, and the rest to the internal SD card. With a Mali T760 graphics chip, this phone pulled off gaming without a hitch. Coupled with 2 gigs of RAM and a 720p resolution, intense games such as Nova 3 ran buttery smooth. Other popular games like Clash of Clans and Boom Beach also ran perfectly well. I ran the N22 benchmark as well and obtained a score of about 31,000. I received reports from another user that his Kingzone N3 Plus contained malware or viruses placed inside a suspicious looking folder in the phone's directory. This scared me quite a bit, as viruses and malware are usually installed at the factory, meaning that you would get the virus no matter which seller you chose. I checked my phone multiple times for suspicious files and folders, but did not find what the user mentioned. However, the virus scan picked up a pre-installed app called Device Management as a virus. The Ulephone B Pro also had that installed and was also flagged as a virus. I'm quite sure that it is a false positive by the virus scan apps. This phone supports Quad Band GSM, Quad Band WCDMA, and FDD LTE Bands 1, 3, 7, and 20. I was able to get LTE very quickly after changing a few APN settings. Reception on this phone is good, but the phone did switch to 3G from LTE more often than I expected. This is probably due to the towers around my area. I performed multiple speed tests in different areas of Toronto, Canada, and obtained speeds anywhere from 36 to 25 megabits a second, which is pretty good. Wi-Fi performance is also good, as I get reception anywhere in the house. My wireless and router is in the basement, and I get reception anywhere in the house, even on the second floor and outside. The GPS locked on almost instantly and never once lost signal. I used this to navigate to work for about one hour and it always stayed on course and never deviated even once. The GPS problems from the MTK6592 chip have largely been fixed completely in phones containing the MTK6732 chips. The Kingzone N3 Plus's camera is a mixed bag. In great lighting conditions, it captured good photos displaying good color accuracy, contrast, and detail. However, the camera is very bad in low light situations. The picture below was taken indoors near a window while the sky was cloudy. The noise immediately took over and destroyed picture quality. I would not recommend taking pictures in anything less than ideal lighting conditions. While I was disappointed with the low light pictures taken by the back camera, I was pleasantly surprised with the quality of the front facing camera. Picture quality is quite good for a front facing camera and is more than adequate for tasks such as video calling and selfies. It is actually better in low light situations than the back camera. While the gap between big name smartphones and Chinese smartphones have closed significantly, 
Chinese smartphones still lag behind their more expensive brothers in a few major areas, such as battery life, camera quality, and premium materials. Kingzone has created a phone that excels in all but three areas, the camera, the feel of the phone, and the battery. The camera should not be used in low-light situations, and the phone itself feels very cheap. The battery is average as well. The Kingzone N3 Plus is a good MTK6732 launch device. While it doesn't lack in power or smoothness, it has an average battery, a subpar camera, and a cheap feel in hand. Lastly, this phone costs $160. US Other phones like the Ulephone B Pro cost about $10 more and are better in many respects. So who would I recommend this phone to? Anyone who wants an MTK6732 device while disliking screens larger than 5 inches. If you are able to get a discount off the $160 price, this phone isn't a bad buy at all. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Click the like button if you liked the video. And check out the other videos, just click on any of the links up above. Thank you very much.